Another closely watched race today is this year's race for Massachusetts governor. We're going to be following both races in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. But meanwhile, as we talk about the Bay State, Martha Coakley, Charlie Baker, both seeking to succeed Governor Deval Patrick, who decided not to run for a third term. Polls have shown that the race is very close. And Eyewitness News reporter Shante Lance is live in studio with more. Good morning, Danielle and Patrick. It's a close race indeed, and at this hour, political analysts believe it's down to those undecided voters. Democratic gubernatorial candidate Martha Coakley spent some of her last 24 hours of campaigning at a diner in Brockton. Meanwhile, Republican Charlie Baker was in Braintree. Al Baker is hoping for political redemption after his 2010 loss to Governor Deval Patrick. As State Attorney General, Coakley is also seeking redemption after her loss to Republican Scott Brown during the 2010 special election to fill the Senate seat left by the late Edward Kennedy. Now, both campaigns have vowed vigorous get out the vote drives today on Election Day while hammering home their own platforms. But one topic they both agree on is pushing for nonpartisanship. We got a lot of work done with the Democratic legislature because you had both teams on the field. Mm -hmm. I think you get a better product. I, I think one party government as a general rule uh, is not particularly accountable or transparent. And I think what people care not so much whether you have a D or an R after your name is who do you stand up for? Who do you speak for? And, and, and my record's pretty clear, standing up against Wall Street, against big businesses, standing up and challenging the Defense of Marriage Act. And if Coakley wins, she would be the first woman elected as Massachusetts governor. Jane Swift served as acting governor from 2001 until 2003. Shante Lenz, Eyewitness News. And there are many important state and city offices up for grabs today. The Providence mayoral race, as we know, could be a close one. Independent Vincent Buddy Cianci and Democrat Jorge Alorza have each had a lead in the polls at one point or another leading up to the election. Daniel Harrop is also in the running on the Republican ticket. Ahead at 630, though, you'll hear why Harrop says he is now going to vote for one of his opponents. And there are four candidates running in the lieutenant governor's race. Democrat Daniel McKee, Republican Catherine Taylor, moderate William Gilbert, and libertarian Tony Jones. So polls set to open in just about an hour here in Rhode Island. We talked to the Secretary of State about what you can expect when you head there to cast your ballot today. Ralph Mollis says... He hopes for a large turnout today. He says the Board of Elections made several changes to avoid the long lines voters experienced at Juanita Sanchez School back in 2012. To cut down on your time in the booth, Mollis suggests reviewing questions ahead of time and having a valid photo ID ready. If you forget it, you cannot be turned away. They will give you a provisional ballot. You sign an affidavit swearing that you are indeed who you say that you are, and your ballot will be counted as, soon, as long as the signatures match at 4 o'clock the next day. Mall says in certain communities like Barrington, there are a lot of questions, so reviewing the information online first can help cut down on the amount of time you spend at the polls. Of course, you can count on Eyewitness News for the most complete election night coverage. We'll bring you live updates every half hour beginning at 7 o'clock, followed by live wall-to-wall -wall coverage beginning at 9 o'clock tonight or earlier if events merit. And that's right here on WPRI 12. You'll also be able to see updated election results for every local race as soon as they come in on WPRI.com.